click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a Z transform of unit step sequence. Now specifically I have written a unit step sequence because I am going to assume the amplitude of step sequence is always 1. Now what is the Z transform? How you are going to find out? I will show you. Now look at here, the step input is always represented by u. If the graph is in time domain, then of course I will write this or represent it by u of t. Right now, z transform is completely based on discrete sequence or discrete sample. That's why I have written u of n. Now look at here, as I told you, I am going to assume this function as a unit step or I am going to consider this is my unit step sequence. Now, next one is, we are going to find out the first of all equation. Now, look at here, this u of n is a causal or you can say right handed, which means the graph is available from 0 to infinity only. So, you can say that when n value is greater than equal to 0, greater than means n value is greater than 0 and equal to means at n equals to 0 also, it is having amplitude 1. But what about left hand side? Look at here, I have not plotted any graph or any sample on left hand side, which means the amplitude available on left hand side is 0. And this will be for n is less than 0. Look at here, for n value is greater than or equal to 0 having amplitude 1 and for n value is less than 0 having amplitude 0. Now the next part we will find out the z transform and later on we will find out the roc so by according to definition of z transform what we are going to write z transform of u of n is represented by u of z and by definition now why the u of n is given reason is u of n is always present for causal period or anti-causal period which means you can find out the response either right handed side or for left handed side now we'll find out the z transform but first of all we'll substitute the value of u of n because u of n is available only from n equal to 0 to n equal to infinity but when n is less than 0 means from minus infinity to minus 1 it is having amplitude 0 and from 0 to infinity it is having amplitude 1. So, we will apply these limits on this summation. So, now look at here. I have substituted the limits from n equal 0 to infinity. From n value varies from 0 to infinity, it is having amplitude 1. Look at here, n value is greater than equal to 0. Greater than equal to 0 means, greater than 0 means what? The last value is always infinity, that's why I have written infinity. And the n equals to 0 is mentioned, means what? The lowest value is n equals to 0. And for this overall region, the amplitude of u of n is 1, that's why I have written 1. But when your n value is left handed, left handed means what? If the value is started from minus infinity to minus 1. The left most value is minus muted for left handed region and the right most is minus 1. But in this region, the amplitude of u of n is 0. That's why I have substituted 0. Now, 0 into anything is result 0. So, I am not going to write this function uh, next time. Now, I will solve only this part. Now, we will find out the z transform this part to find out the z transform of u of n or conversion or transformation of u of n into a z domain. Now, basically we have studied one formula. What was that? I will show you. The summation value varies from n equal to 0 to infinity a raised to n. The formula was 1 upon 1 minus a. Now, here we have the same summation value and we have the order n in both the sides. So only the thing is if we take the z inverse common or you can see if we write z to the power minus 1 inside the bracket then we have 
power n. Now look at here. This was our formula. So we have a summation value similar on both the sides also. And here we have a to the power n and here we have z to the power minus n. So we can treat z to the power minus n as a z a raised to n also. So we can treat z to the power minus n like a to the power n. How? I'll show you. So look at here, my a will be now z to the power minus 1 and whole rest to we have n which means here if I compare both these formulae then we can say that my a value is z to the power minus 1. So only thing is we have to substitute this value in my formula. So this is our result but this is not the exact one. We have to multiply and divide it by z. So z into 1 is z, here also z into 1 is z, but z into z to the power minus 1, what will be the result? If the bases are same, then of course orders will be added. And you will get z to the power 0 and anything raised to 0 is always 1. And now you can say that this is the z transform of u of n. Now. The much more important part is ROC. ROC means we have to find out the region in which U of n can be transformed easily or U of n will be gives us a finite result. So we will use this format or we will use this result to find out the ROC of U of n. Now what is important? The denominator part. Now we know that the definition according to ROC value the denominator pool or denominator factor is always greater than a 0 which means we can say that a mod of z minus 1 is always greater than 0. Now if we shift this minus 1 on the right hand side then what you will get? The result will be mod z is greater than 1 which means the ROC of this given u of n value is only available when the z or mod z value is greater than 1 which means basically the ROC of u of n is available outside the unit circle. Let's assume this is the unit circle or unit radius circle. Now on the axis what I am going to write the imaginary part of z and real part of z. So according to this ROC statement what you can say that your ROC is available and it is greater than 1 which means our ROC is available outside the unit circle. Your ROC is available outside the unit circle which means ROC of u of n is available outside the unit circle this was our statement. So now we will find out its mirror image value and its ROC. A mirror image. How to find out mirror image of u of n? Basically we can directly write u of minus n but what I want, I want to calculate the left hand side value of unit set. We have already calculated the right hand side of u of n. But if the u of n is available on left hand side then, so first of all, how to find out this value? Basically, our u of n was available from zero to infinity and having amplitude one this was the graph and we have written one statement also or equation for u of n and that was so this statement is only for a causal or right handed side of u of n but now what i want i want to calculate a left hand sided value of u of n. So look at here. How will you calculate the left hand sided value of u of n? Now what we are going to assume the u of n having amplitude 1 and it is available on the left hand side. Left hand side means what? When n value is less than 0. When n value is less than 0 means what? How we are going to find out? We are going to apply a time reversal property or a mirror image property on this graph. Mirror image means what? 
will find out its will multiply all the sample values by minus sign so if i multiply all the samples by minus sign then what you will get this zero multiplied by minus sign the result is zero but one into minus answer is minus one minus into two result is minus two minus into three result is minus three which means the samples available on right hand side after multiplying it by minus sign they all are available on left hand side but the value is now available from minus infinity to zero but what we want basically this zero value is counted in u of n and i don't want to calculate result at n equal to zero because it's counted in causal what i want a non-causal or left-handed sequence so how to get left-handed sequence if we add one value or if we advance this graph by one then your graph will be shifted towards left hand side by one this is the value which I have added so you can get this if we solve this part then what you will get n equal to 1 so all the graph will be shifted towards a left hand side now what is important so what we can say that right now our graph is left hand sided this graph was a right hand sided completely and now this one is a left hand sided and now we are going to find out the equation and then we'll move on to z transform this function so this is our left hand side of u of n now how to write the equation left hand side of u of n is represented by u of minus n minus 1 and it is having amplitude 1 and what about time period we can write this time period in two ways this amplitude 1 is available from minus infinity to minus 1 or else you can write when n is less than 0 and it is having amplitude 0 when n is greater than or equal to 0 so this is a time period and you can say this is our equation now we are going to apply a z transform of u of minus n minus 1 now z transform of u of minus n minus 1 what will be the time limit of course we can write minus infinity to infinity also but there is no use because from 0 to infinity this function is having amplitude 0 so no need to write that part now what will be the value of summation of course i'm going to substitute both the values that is from minus infinity to infinity because we know that from minus infinity to minus 1 this function is having amplitude 1 but from 0 to infinity this function is having amplitude 0 but according to definition we have to write this So now look at here from minus infinity to minus 1 this function is having amplitude 1 but from n equal to 0 to infinity this is having amplitude 0. So 0 into anything answer is 0. So we are going to solve only this part. What is the next step because we have a limits value which is negative and we don't have any formula for to solve a negative time sequence but if we use a time reversal property then we can change this limit from negative side to positive or you can say from minus infinity minus 1 into 1 to infinity so according to time reversal property what we are going to do just simply substitute n equals to minus m so what do you get if you multiply minus n on both the sides then our m value will be a minus n so i'm going to substitute n equals to minus m over here and minus n is replaced by m now simply multiply minus sign on both the sides of time limit what you can say that if we multiply minus sign with m then m will be positive but look at here if we multiply minus sign over here then this time limit will also changes to positive and now you can say that the lower limit will be plus one and upper limit will be infinity and this is our 
answer but this is not the exact answer reason is we are going to apply a formula on it and we have studied one formula this was our formula a raised to n from one summation value varies from 1 to infinity a raised to n is a upon 1 minus a now look at here here the summation value which depends on n where here it is depends on m now we have a to the power n in our formula and here we have z to the power m so both the formulas are same basically here we have n variable but here we have m variable and the function is z and here we have a variable a so both this formula same so i'll consider my a is nothing but z so after substituting the value of a what i get z upon 1 minus z now what we want i want to make this z value positive because we have a minus sign in front of z how to make it just take the minus sign common from denominator and you will get minus of z upon z minus 1 you can say that this result is similar to z transform of u of n but only the changes we have to multiply it by minus n so you can write z transform of u of minus n minus 1 like this also or else minus of u of minus n minus 1 is nothing but z upon z minus 1 basically this formula and u of n formula is much more important while calculating the roc in inverse z transform whenever the function is right hand sided then we will always replace z upon z minus 1 by u of n but if our function is left handed sided then we will replace z upon z minus 1 by minus u of minus n minus 1 now we will find out the roc and we will use this formula because this is our main result now how to find out roc we want denominator part this was the main statement of roc and what we have in denominator we have 1 minus z so i will place mod of 1 minus z is greater than equal to 0 now what i will do i will shift this z value on right hand side then what you can say that 1 is greater than z or you can say that mod z is less than 1 so from this what you can say that basically our transformation of z terms of u of minus n and minus 1 will give us a finite value when your roc is inside the unit circle let's assume this is our unit circle now according to this statement what we can say that the z transform of left handed sided u of n is having roc inside this unit circle so this is a roc so what is important the z transform of u of n and z transform of u of n minus n minus 1 and its roc so thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikeda and subscribe to ikeda thank you so much